Hey Crafty Cuties, a bunch of you have requested to see how I make my charms and tassels. I've mentioned I've had an older video, but you wanted to see my updated version, so let's jump right in. So when I am making a charm and tassel for my books, um, I start out by using these ring fasteners on the spine of my books. I have a tutorial showing you how I place these on here, so you can check that out if you are curious. So I'm making a charm and a tassel for this vintage sewing journal and I'm going to start out by making the charm. Uh, I buy a lot of these charm sets that come from Michaels and they have a bunch of coordinating charms which is nice because then they kind of already go together and it makes um, it a lot easier for you. I also use these Tim Holtz swivel clasps again makes it much easier. Now I have started out by placing the first charm on here just to save a little bit of time and I'll go ahead and I will show you how I will place the rest on. A lot of times you guys want to know how do I choose the things that I choose or how do I get the ideas. That's something that I can't really explain. Um, I, literally these ideas just come to me and I don't really feel like I have the most matchy matchy style. I kind of just pull things that I like and I don't really care too much about if they match or go together. I just choose things I like. So right now I'm just pulling some beads because I know I want to put some beads on this charm and um, I'm not sure how full I want to make it but I'm also going to use these eye pins. They have a teeny little loop at the end and I like to put these on my charms just because it kind of makes them a little chunkier and a little full. And I'm just going to go ahead and place some beads. These are kind of like a brownish marbled color. I really like this, especially for this kind of vintage vibe thing that I want going on. And I'm just going to place two or three beads and I like to make a couple of these usually per charm. So I'm just going to kind of go like that. I'll make one more and kind of see since we have a bigger charm that we're starting with I might not need too many other things going on because that will be the main focus. Okay I also have this really cool little wooden button that I'm thinking I will put on. So I also have these little jump rings and I will use those to attach everything. I have this spool of ribbon um, it came on this set right here and I just tied some invisible kind of clear um, I don't even know like thread around it and that's how we will attach it to this so let's see we'll start out by placing some of the beads I'm going to use my pliers here and trim off a little bit of this because this one's going to be a little too long and I don't do anything fancy or perfect at all I'm just gonna take the tip of this and kind of curve this around not all the way since I'm going to go ahead and place it on my chain and just figure out I'll start at the top here and I'm just going to place it at the top and then I'll use my pliers to close it and then that's what I will continue doing until I have this as full as I want. So I'm going to continue that and then we can move on to the tassel. And for this um, button here, I'm just going to take a bigger jump ring, open it up, and I know you can't really see the details here, but when I zoom in too much, my camera kind of doesn't focus very well. So I'd rather have you see the overview here. So I'm just gonna place this on. And then I might even skip that spool of ribbon because it is kind of big. So I'm just gonna kind of squeeze that shut. Okay, let's see what we going, we got going on here. And I kind of just check as I go to see how full it is and see if I want to keep adding or not. Trim a little bit of that off. Trim that, or not trim, but turn that. And we'll place that right here. So I'll just see how I like it so far. Um, I feel like we can definitely add some more. So I'm going to basically for this part, I'm just going to tie this on really well um, with this clear thread. And I like to use the clear just because uh, I like the look of it. Okay, so let's see. 
trying to figure out where I feel like I need something. I think I'm gonna tie this one up at the top here. So I think I am quite happy with this, but I'm going to go ahead and actually place it on the book so that I can see and remember that I will be having a tassel as well. So I don't like to go overboard on the charms, especially when I will be having a tassel added. Kind of hard to get this all in frame for you guys but i am happy with this so now let's move on to the tassel so for the tassel you're just going to need different laces and trims you're going to need some type of a loop i use these ones that i get from the dollar tree um, they do open up but i don't really use it for that feature because i always pair my tassels with the charms and I use this part of the charm to um, have it be removable. So, um, but these just work really well anyways. So I went through my stash and basically chose a bunch of different um, pieces of lace that I liked. Um, I wanted to use actually scrap pieces of fabric and muslin for this one since it is like a vintage sewing theme. And I wanted to show you how I easily get those strips. I basically just take a scrap piece of fabric and I fold it up real tight and then I just cut strips. And that might be obvious, but I feel like it's kind of a nice little tip and it just makes it super quick to get these really thin strips. So I went through, I got everything picked out that I want and now I'm just going to start playing around with it. Oh, by the way, I do always add a ton of pieces of twine because this is what I'm going to use to um, incorporate different beads and charms throughout the tassel, which is something that I love doing. So now I'm just going to start kind of picking these up and just piling them all together into a little pile that I think looks nice and I just play around with it a bunch. I would say that the most time consuming part of this is choosing the different laces and um, adding the charms and beads when I get it all on the loop. Um, so yeah, and I like to keep mine all pretty neutral. You'll see I added a couple pops of color into this one, however, Typically, I like to keep them pretty neutral. I just like the look of it um, paired with any journal and it does make it a lot more interchangeable when you keep it neutral. But again, that's just what I like. You can make this to match anything that you like. And I'm just adding in a bunch of varieties. Um, I love adding in things like these little uh, faux leather flowers and these this twine here that has like um or not twine it has like little leaves on it i got that from junk this that treasure junk that treasures so i will just continue adding these all into a pile and i really like adding the scrap pieces of the muslin at least for this style okay and in a moment, I will show you how I secure everything together. Um, I do typically use a sewing machine, but I'm going to show you how to do it with just hot glue because I know not everyone has a sewing machine, but I can also show you how I sew mine together because that's going to make it like the most secure that you can. And I like to do that since again, I'm selling my items. I want to make sure that they're going to be durable and last. Um, just because when you are making a tassel, uh, you do want to make sure that pieces can't get pulled out, pull, pulling out, pulled out of your little bunch there. Of course, that's not something that would happen right away, but over time that could happen since it's just one long continuous little pile here. So I have everything arranged how I want, but I'm realizing I don't like this trim, so I'm going to take that out. I might not use this tassel for this book because I really am digging the spine by itself. So I do want to make this neutral. So again, I can use it on there if I want or I can use it on a different journal. Okay, I have everything piled in. You're gonna see, I do not worry about having everything be the exact same length. Most of these are about eight inches long. I really like the look of having different lengths in my tassel. I think it gives some interest. So now I'm going to kind of place this on my loop halfway in the middle there. And that is one reason why I like that this opens up. So this is just kind of giving me an idea of what things are looking like. And I like to just kind of fold it over. 
close that. Okay, I'm liking that again. I'm just gonna play around with it. Just kind of get an idea where everything is placed before I make anything permanent. So now you have a couple different ways that you can go about securing yours. Um, if you don't have a sewing machine, you can use hot glue. And I'm going to actually sew mine today, so I'm not using hot glue because I really don't like to use any type of glue when I am going to sew. Um, I have done it on my old sewing machine, but um, basically what I would do if I were going to hot glue is I would start out by adding hot glue on the underside of the loop where everything's going to be wrapped around. So I'm hoping that you guys can get a good visual here. So I would add some hot glue on this underside here, and then I would take all of the ribbons, sorry, and basically wrap them all around and press really hard. Then I kind of start layer by layer, and I will pick up anything that was not attached and held down by the hot glue, and I will start adding more layers of hot glue pressing everything down once again and then kind of see what is loose and what's not glued on there and add more hot glue until we get to the top where everything is glued on and then I will show you how we're going to conceal everything and make it pretty but again I sew mine to make them very secure so let's go to the sewing machine. So now I have everything squeezed together and I have it kind of flattened down because I don't want this to be too thick when I'm sewing. So you'll see, we, we will put everything together um, at the end. But So I have this kind of flattened out like so, and I'm basically going to sew one line over here and then I'll do a back, a back stitch on that as well. And get as close to the loop as you can. And I just realized, now you can decide if you want the opening part of your loop to be at the top or not. Um, I'll go ahead and make mine at the top. However, again, we won't be using that as a way to make it removable or not, but that way there's that option. If that, I hope I'm making sense here. Okay. Just kind of squeeze everything down as well as you can because you don't want it to be very thick. So now that we have it sewed all the way across, you can see it's pretty flat. I like mine to be more circular here in the middle. So. Basically, um, the sewing is just to secure everything, but you can see we can easily squeeze that into a pretty shape. And now I'm going to use some thicker gold thread to kind of conceal that sewing area and make it pretty. Okay, so I'm going to basically start wrapping my thread all the way around in this middle here, but I'm going to start out by tying this so that it's secure again. We want everything to be secure and I'm just going to do a couple knots here and I'm leaving the tail of this thread long so that it can kind of blend in with um, the rest of the tassel. And I'm, where we are tying that, I'm going to add a little dot of glue and sorry, I hope you guys can see that. And I'm using my trusty Tombow Mono Glue there. And I just kind of add a dot there. And then I will tie this once again really tight. And then we're going to start wrapping this all the way around to make a really pretty band. There we go. So now I'm just going to wrap it around until I am happy with the width of the band that I want to create. And I really like using gold thread for this because I think it looks really pretty, but you can use regular twine or anything that you'd like. Embroidery floss works good. Okay, so once I am done, I'm going to trim off quite a bit because we are now going to take that remaining piece that we had that was wrapping around and I'm going to wrap it around to the back and I am basically going to tie this up with that first string that we started and we left it, you know, lo as long as the tassel, in this case I left it a little longer, and I'm going to dot tie another double knot and I'm going to repeat with adding the little dot of glue where I'm making the dot. I don't know why I keep calling it a dot. The, the tie. The knot. Knot. There we go. And then you can trim 
the remaining thread if you would like. Now I will just trim these. I'd rather have them too long than not long enough for tying. And there we go. Now you're left with a really pretty tassel, but I like to go ahead now and add beads and bells and charms all throughout. And I'll show you one, but I'm not gonna uh, stick around for too long doing that just because this part actually takes me quite a bit of time. Now, since we used that um, twine, it's going to be easy for most of my beads to go ahead and just string a couple on. And I do like to sometimes place two on like one string just because it kind of gives it a fun sound. So I'm going to go ahead and just string those on and then I just tie a knot at the end. It's really simple. And then I just tie any of the charms that I want as well. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this all throughout on a bunch of these pieces of twine. So now it's time to attach our tassel to our charm. And so simply I'm going to take this little swivel part off and you just squeeze and then I'm just basically going to put my loop in there like so and of course if you are not using the same charms that I am using here um, there's going to be several way easy ways that you can attach those together um, even if you were using just this loop as your main connector you could just like add your charms onto this one you could add them onto underneath this band or you could add um, a big jump ring right here and just have the charm kind of hanging on the side there are a bunch of different ways that you can kind of connect these together but you can kind of see how they kind of meld together at the same time you can have these separate or you can have just the charm or just the tassel and it looks really good but there we go so i hope this helped you guys out i hope that you will give these tassels a try i really love adding them to the books and i will see you guys in the next video bye